Send two units. They're bringing her down now. No, Lieutenant, your men are already dead. During the last year of the 20th century, The Matrix was released and stunned audiences. It followed the concept that our reality was in fact a simulation, called the Matrix, and our lives played out like a dream, while machines harvested us for energy in the real world. The film was beautifully executed and a cinematography and special effects masterpiece. The leading female in the film was Trinity, played by Kerry Ann Moss. Trinity is a computer programmer and a hacker, who has escaped from the Matrix. Her abilities are extraordinary, and she is called to assist Neo, in his transition into the real world. From automatic weapons, to martial arts, and even flying a helicopter, Trinity excels in almost everything. But what really makes the character special, is the performance given by Moss. Trinity becomes close with Neo, and is told by the Oracle, a prophet in the Matrix, that she would fall in love with him. Perhaps it's this, that enables Neo's special power, proving that love, after all, conquers all. Battlestar Galactica first appeared on our televisions in 1978 and was pretty much male-dominated. The concept, however, was quite original, despite looking a little familiar to the blockbuster space opera that appeared in cinemas the previous year. In a reimagined masterpiece, Battlestar Galactica 2004, often called BSG by the fans, followed the same story concept. The 12 colonies of humans had been destroyed in an interplanetary terrorist attack, brought on by the Cylons, a bunch of human-created machines that had evolved to look just like us. The only surviving humans with any chance of escape were those left on a few hundred starships scattered around the colonies. The Cylons were hot on their tail, as the humans fled the orbits of their worlds, in search of a 13th planetary colony called Earth. In a gender twist, several characters from the original series were now played by females. The most notable, being Starbuck. While many fans and critics were not sure about Starbuck being female at first, the character, played by Katie Sackhoff, soon became the most loved, and the reason why many people were tuning in. Cara Thrace, aka Starbuck, was a rough and tumble, heavily drinking, gambling and smoking fighter pilot, often described as the best in the fleet. At first the character was restless and unsettled. I have broken more rules than I followed, I fucked up, okay, I messed up! However, as the show continued on, Starbuck's role shifted to one of purpose and self-sacrifice. I've completed my journey. It feels good. She was an outstanding pilot, friend and lover, an emotionally deep and charismatic character. Sakoff received a Saturn Award for Best Actor and has become a major player in a long line of feminist television icons. You know, everyone I know is fighting to get back what they had. 
I'm fighting because I don't know how to do anything else. I'm not a Cylon. I'm Sharon Valeri. Another male character from the original that was replaced by a female was none other than Boomer, also called Athena and Cylon Number 8. Number 8 was a sleeper Cylon model that was working on the Galactica as Sharon Vlary, a Raptor pilot. I'm gonna catch help from the LSO, but it wasn't entirely my fault she... Primary Gimbal's acting up again. Oh, it's a Gimbal's fault again. At first, she didn't know she was a Cylon. The Gimbal is broken. Sure. But soon finds out when she meets many copies of herself on board a Cylon ship. As her inner Cylon begins to wake, Boomer participates in acts of sabotage and eventually tries to kill Commander Adama. She is assassinated. After downloading her consciousness to a new Model 8, she continues her life on the Cylon base ship. What do you want from me, Hilo? She's a Cylon! Meanwhile, another Sharon has fallen in love with Captain Halo. When she returns to the Galactica, the fleet are now aware she is a Cylon. However, she proves loyal to the humans, and eventually mothers the first human Cylon hybrid child. Extremely well played by Grace Park, Sharon's character goes through so many highs and lows, it makes for very emotional viewing. One of the first characters we meet, is Cylon model number 6, played by Trisha Helfer. Six is a beautiful, intelligent and seductive Cylon infiltrator. Probably built to attract the opposite sex. She gains the trust of Dr. Gaius Baltar, the genius behind the colonial defense system. From there, she is able to infiltrate the system, and allow the invading Cylons to launch an attack against the now defenseless, 12 planets of the colonies. What exactly do you say? Humanity's children are returning home. The humans are practically wiped out in the attack. Guys, I can't die. When this body is destroyed, my memory, my consciousness will be transmitted to a new one. There are 12 models. I'm number six. Six is killed in an atomic explosion, but manages to protect Baltar from the blast by shielding him. Caprica 6 is also a recurring vision, frequently seen by Baltar. Her presence as this apparition is an important tool in steering the narrative, bringing some intriguing interactions between the characters. But I'm just in your head, guys. They don't know about me or us or our life together. How romantic. Every bomb, every bullet, every weapon I have down to my own eye teeth to end you. I swear it! I'm coming for all of you! While there are many other strong female characters appearing in Battlestar Galactica, maybe one of the strongest, yet most vulnerable, is Laura Roslin, played by Mary McDonnell. Just prior to the Cylon attack on the colonies, Roslyn is the Secretary of Education under President Adar. After a visit to her doctor, she is told she has breast cancer. During the day of the Cylon attack, she is on board Galactica. Because the President and almost all of his cabinet is annihilated in the strike, Laura is the highest-ranking government official, 43rd in line to the presidency. 
she is sworn in as president of the Twelve Colonies and becomes a major character in the series. Laura's journey begins in conflict with Admiral Adama, but as the show progresses, their relationship deepens and eventually blossoms into one of mutual respect and admiration for one another. Laura struggles with her illness, political opposition, finding Earth. I have always and will continue to feel the scriptures hold real-world relevance. And following a path laid out in scriptures are all pinnacle moments in the narrative. Your friendship and your trust means correct. Clearly, my friendship and trust mean frack. And I don't really care if you have to spend the night on your knees praying or just on your knees. I want a name. I want to know who's responsible for these lies. Like many characters in the show, the heavy weight of conflict and struggle is testament to extremely well-written characters and masterful performances. Oh, my God. That's Ellen Ty. Bill. How many dead chicks are out there? Ellen Ty. I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Aren't you going to help a lady down off this thing? While only being a minor character at first is a very memorable one and crucial to the overall story. Rather flirtatious and sexually promiscuous, Ellen uses social interactions to elevate her status and that of her husband, Colonel Sol Tai, second in command to the Battlestar and close friend of Adama. Ellen, played by Kate Vernon, goes to great lengths to protect her husband and oversteps the boundary when she gives crucial intelligence to the enemy in order to free her husband from imprisonment. <sighs> You've always been there for me when I need you. In one of the most emotionally powerful <clears throat> scenes of the series, Sol is forced to deal with the situation before the resistance discovers her betrayal. Give me direct contact. Pegasus, this is Galactica Actual. Authenticate identity with recognition codes immediately. Galactica, this is Pegasus Actual. Madonna, is that you? Admiral Kane. As Galactica and the fleet continue to run from the pursuing Cylons, they come into contact with another Battlestar. Admiral Kane, played again by Michelle Forbes, commands the Battlestar Pegasus and outranks Adama. She immediately takes over, and a conflict between the two battleships emerges. You are making such a mistake. Kane is a hard woman, and is an extremely intimidating commander. Many of her crew follow out her orders in fear, but at the same time, out of great respect and loyalty. Adama has taken us over the line. He's left with no choice to launch the alert vipers. After a crucial joint mission, both leaders plan to have each other assassinated at the end, which makes for some nail-biting storytelling. Yeah. I just sat there listening to us, pretending to be our friend. Thank you! Admiral, please! Kane, who has no time or toleration towards the Cylons, even the allied ones, eventually faces her enemy, a number six model, who has been victim to the Admiral's abuse on board the Pegasus. Tell me, Admiral. Can you roll a her? Frack you. You're not my type. I don't Once need your life. pity. You haven't got my pity. Listen, you are fine. You're fine with the dead guys. It's the living ones you can't deal with. Battlestar Galactica captivated audiences all over the world. Its gender swapping of main character roles impacted the plot, 
and gave emotional weight to certain relationships between characters. It proves that when good reasons are given, for turning previous male roles into females, instead of just doing it without purpose, and simply to highlight an agenda, a series can be elevated to another level. Just get it over with, you fracking coward. Galactica, more than many other sci-fi series, has explored in great detail, the human element. While a new reimagined version is being planned, one can only hope it will be given as much thought and emotional gravity, as this superbly constructed television series had. So say we all. So say we all. Do you like our owl? Replicants are like any other machine. They're either a benefit or a hazard. The replicant, human, or machine. Enter Rachel. A replicant created to be so human, she doesn't even know she's a machine. In the critically acclaimed motion picture, Blade Runner, Rachel is played by Sean Young, a beautiful creation of the Tyrell Corporation. When she is tested, and then told by Deckard, a police officer specializing in locating and destroying replicants, that she is indeed non-human, her world falls apart. Implants. Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. They're Tyrell's nieces. Confused and scared, she escapes her creators, and later saves Deckard from being murdered by another replicant. While Rachel's reality is a frightening journey, from being a warm-blooded person, to that of a cold creation, her relationship with Deckard, elevates him from a cold, non-emotional, machine-like hunter, to a warm-hearted human, that must do everything to protect the one he loves. Blade Runner is a masterpiece, and one of the first movies to address the notion of non-human beings, being able to feel, with such depth and emotional weight. While the film centers around the journey of Deckard and Roy, and the underlying theme of what life is, the females within the story are essential at highlighting the value of life, the importance of relationships and interactions, and how the sum of our experiences make us who we are. This theme is carried over to the sequel, Blade Runner 2049, released 35 years after the original. The sequel had a lot to live up to, and delivered with flying colors. Love, played by Sylvia Herx, is an obedient, icy replicant, who is very good at killing, Bad dog. and seems to be lost in negative human emotions. Where is he? A personal assistant to the head of the new replicant-making industry, she is given the mission, to find the child of Deckard and Rachel, a human replicant hybrid. She stops at nothing to achieve this task, including snuffing out some pretty important characters. If replicants, possessing human emotions, desires and consciousness, are inured with the same rights as biological humans, then where does that leave non-physical artificial intelligence? You look lonely. The main character, K, is a replicant Blade Runner. He feels loneliness just like a human would. He runs a holographic program called Joy, to keep him company. Joy, played by Ana de Armas, has the ability to appear as she likes, and also stores experiences, which develops a personality more suitable to the user over time. Do you want to dance, or do you want to open your present? What present? She is gifted with portability from Kay, and joins him on his journey to find the truth. Joy is a perfect partner, but lacks physicality. She recruits an escort to give Kay a tactile experience with her, and is a loyal and devoted partner. These films and their themes are pivotal in questioning what life is. I can fix that. They depict technology as human and may hold some insight to a reality that may be only decades away. How will we treat non-human humans? And maybe, more interestingly, 
How will the non-human humans treat us? Created by a flawed and discriminatory creature, perhaps the machines will hold themselves to be our superiors. And man will bow in front of his creation. And our fate will very much be what we have made for ourselves.